Let us start this celebration by honoring this great country of ours. Would you all please remain standing as the CHS Symphonic Choir, under the direction of Mrs. Malik Kennard, sings the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air it proved through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Good evening, everyone. I am Matthew Ballantyne, principal of the Chillicothe High School. While this is an unconventional way of gathering for graduation, we gather from our couches, kitchen tables, or wherever we get the best Wi-Fi signal to celebrate the commencement of the young men and women of the class of 2020. The accomplishments that we celebrate tonight would not be possible without the dedication of many individuals. We'd like to recognize the Chillicothe City School District's Board of Education, President Mr. Steve Mullins, Vice President Mr. Jeff Hartmus, Mrs. Joyce Shoemaker, Mrs. Liz Corzine, and Mr. Bill Bonner. This evening, representing the Board of Education is the Vice President, Mr. Jeff Hartmus. We would also like to acknowledge our Superintendent of the Chillicothe City School District, Ms. Debbie Swinehart. We'd also be remiss if we did not recognize those who oversee, serve, and advise the Chillicothe High School students, including Assistant Principal Mr. Dan Staggs, Mr. Dustin Weaver, Mrs. Sarah Hawthorne, School Counselor, along with Mr. Mark Rausch and Mr. Chris Camps. Members of the faculty and staff who have contributed to make this evening special include our administrative assistants, Kathy Smith, Crystal Puckett, Amy Winfield, Erica Barnes, and Amanda Cheek. Our senior class advisor and math teacher, Ms. Megan Clark, along with the entire faculty and staff who have dedicated countless hours to make this evening possible. While graduation is the pinnacle of a student's high school career, it is a kindergarten through 12th grade endeavor, and the Chillicothe City School District staff is one of our greatest assets. In particular, our staff is a major reason why our district's curriculum, extracurricular activities, and educational programs are so successful. This includes administrators, teachers, administrative assistants, custodians, bus drivers, aides, monitors, and cooks. We would be remiss if we did not acknowledge their dedication to the class of 2020 over the last 13 years. And finally, there is the most important group of people that we must recognize this evening because without them, this commencement ceremony would not be possible. Parents and guardians of the class of 2020, thank you for trusting us to educate your children. In addition, thank you for your support that you have provided to your graduate along the way. Without your love and encouragement, it is very possible that your student would not be present here this evening. 
We appreciate your partnership over the last 13 years as we have worked together to make today's accomplishments possible. Let us take a moment as we recognize each of these persons. Good evening, Cavaliers. I stand before you on May 24th, 2020, while many of you are standing in front of your computer monitors at home, watching our commencement 2020 take place. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Right now, we should be gathered in the Hatton Gymnasium with a thousand of our closest friends and family to celebrate the 13 years of your public education. Just weeks ago, we should have celebrated prom, held our academic awards ceremony, and given away the free car from Hernstein Automotive for our Keys to Success winner. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Instead, we joined together on Zoom and Google to see our teachers, classmates, family, and friends. We stay home to ensure that we don't put our families at risk of catching this deadly virus known as the coronavirus. We didn't get a chance to sit in our classroom for the final fourth nine weeks or give your favorite teacher that hug before walking across the stage to receive your diploma. It wasn't supposed to be this way. This is a phrase that has been used over and over for the last 11 weeks, as we have battled together this disease known as the COVID-19, for which I'm still trying to figure out if the 19 stands for the year the disease was founded or the amount of weight I will gain while social distancing and quarantining in my home. Regardless, this has been a school year unlike any other in recent history. And like many who love and support you as the class of 2020, we, are, we have found ourselves making the statement, it wasn't supposed to be this way. And as I reflected on this statement and took some time to truly understand the bigger picture of this pandemic, I came across a book written by the New York Times bestseller author, Lisa Turkist, entitled, it's not supposed to be this way. And so, what do you think I decided to do? Yep, you're right, I read it. It's in this book that she writes, if you have ever experienced an unexpected darkness, a silence and stillness you aren't used to, know that these hard times, these devastating disappointments, these seasons of suffering are not for nothing. They will grow you and they will shape you. It is from this quote that I remember asking myself, how will this experience shape me? How can I grow from this? And this is the challenge that I give you today as you close one chapter of your life and move to the next. While this chapter didn't end as you expected it to, there is still much more to be written in your book of life. For years, we've had events that have left people making the statement, it wasn't supposed to be this way. Just 18 years ago, as many of you were coming into the world, the United States of America was recovering from the tragedy of 9-11. I remember as I watched it unfold, saying to myself, this wasn't supposed to be this way. Innocent men and women lost their lives as a result of unsolicited terrorism. However, in the same vein, I witnessed a nation come together in the weeks and months following this tragedy. I saw American flags hung on every porch across the country as we celebrated our pride in the United States of America. And all of our differences were put aside. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina caused over $125 billion in damage to the city of New Orleans and surrounding areas. 
winds of 125 miles an hour and over 1,800 fatalities. Meanwhile, our nation came together to support this area of our country financially and by good works. And so yet good came from it. And according to Jacob Reams, he writes that cooperation and solidarity are visible after disasters and can also make ordinary lives richer and more resilient. Ordinary lives richer and more resilient out of tragedy. In each of these examples, the devastating disappointments for those who experienced them, the question was asked, how will this experience shape me? How can I grow from this? So I ask you today, how has the COVID-19 pandemic shaped you? How can you grow from this? I know that this question right now may be hard to answer. Maybe not in this very moment can you answer it, but I guarantee you that the more you reflect on those questions, you will find answers. Answers that bring you comfort. And I know that for sure, each of you, this time of quarantine has given you more time to be at home with your families and loved ones. And as some of you prepare to move out, to go to college, to join the military, or to go on to life on your own, this time at home may be one that you remember forever. And I also know that through these difficult times, it's imperative that we see the silver lining. In her blog post entitled, Three, we Three Ways to See the Silver Lining in Every Storm, Emily Stroria gives these three stellar piece of, pieces of advice that allow us to make it through difficult situation. First, she says, optimism gives us the positive energy we need to face every day with a fresh pair of ears and eyes. Listening and paying attention to the signs that life shows us. These signs will be positive or negative, but with optimism, we can believe that even with a negative, there is always a positive to follow, as long as we are in the flow and trusting. Number two, she states, humor helps us remember that we are human and life isn't going to be perfect. Sometimes we spend so much focus on the detailed plan we have in our heads that when something does go wrong, it may put us in a bad place. Even with these roadblocks, look for the silver lining. Try to find the humor behind it. Personally, I get so wrapped up in the silly things that I forget to take a step back and see that it's not really that serious. It's often said that laughter is the best medicine. We are so much more than our physical bodies and environment. We are a soul searching for life. Allow your humor to be a source of comfort and relief. And thirdly, she writes, trusting in the unknown gives us the freedom to let go and surrender. It's so painful to try and have control over every aspect of our lives. You may never know what the bigger picture is, but through trying to do your best every day and give what you can is more than enough. We all have a unique purpose. Whether or not you've discovered yours yet doesn't matter. What does matter is that you can seize each day and every day with the knowing that you are listening and allowing the universe and the soul to guide you. So my friends, today, let's find the silver linings to all that the class of 2020 has experienced and been a part of. The class of 2020 I affectionately call the class that will change the world. What made me come to this conclusion, you ask? 
while I have only been the Chillicothe High School principal for one year, some may argue three quarters of a year, I have seen the class of 2020 make some great strides and move Chillicothe High School in the right direction. I think back to homecoming weekend when some members of your executive and senior council came to us and said, we want to make homecoming bigger. And so you did. We had our Thursday night lights football game, preceded by our very first, in a long time, homecoming parade. But that wasn't enough for the class of 2020. You had the awesome idea of bringing back the tradition of powder buff foot football. But that still wasn't enough. It wasn't just a little powder puff football action. It was an entire day at the O, celebrating homecoming, battling it out on the turf to see which class had the ability to make it to the top of the bracket. And then we move on to the epic pep rally that allowed us to come together to get everyone excited for the boys basketball game on December 20th, 2019. It was again that our marching band came to hype the crowd as we participated in crazy events like frozen t-shirt contests. Name that Christmas tune, a cookie eating contest, and many more extraordinary events. You are the class that brought our attention to the need to emphasize more the importance of our students' mental health. As we join together to recognize that each of us struggle and have issues that we are dealing with. It was on that day of our mental health assembly that many students began to take steps necessary for healing after dealing with some pretty serious issues. Class of 2020, you were the class that welcomed our seventh and eighth grade students into the many areas of the high school activities with open arms. With this being the first year, we were an official 712 building. It was your leadership that allowed others to acknowledge how important reaching out to our younger Cavaliers is. And you are an example to them as you cheer at our athletic competitions, support our fine arts programs. And it is because of your example that they will be better people. You are the first class that managed to get the state of Ohio to eliminate, even if only temporarily, the Ohio State tests and managed not to have to take final exams. Nice job, class of 2020. Beyond all of these individual events and activities, the class of 2020 has blessed Chillicothe High School. And it would be remiss of me not to mention the great culture and climate you created in the halls of CHS on a regular basis. The joy and laughter that each of you brought to the classrooms and hallways. The tears that we shed together the feeling of family and camaraderie that you brought to the C-section, pep rallies, athletic arenas, and fine arts. We have truly enjoyed your tenure here at Chillicothe High School, and we look forward to the many things that you will do in the next chapters of your life. Whether you're entering the workforce, attending a university, or joining the military to defend our great country. CHS is indebted to you for the hard work and dedication that you have put into making Chillicothe High School a better place over the last four years. As you enter into the world beyond high school, I remind you to go into the world being confident in who you are. Stand true to what you know is right. I'd like to conclude with lyrics from one of my favorite songs from The Greatest Showman, entitled This Is Me, where the lyricist writes, when the sharpest words want to cut me down, I'm going to send a flood, going to drown them out. I am brave. I am bruised. I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. Look out, because here I come, and I'm marching on to the beat I drum. I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies, this is me. While I can say it wasn't supposed to be this way, 
I can also say, continue to push on from this experience and seek ways that you can learn and grow from it. Look for the silver linings in all difficult situations, for difficult situations are inevitable, and go out into the world confidently, knowing that you were created for good. May God bless you in all of your life's endeavors. And remember, once a cavalier, always a cavalier. Congratulations, class of 2020. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce the valedictorian of the class of 2020, Miss Elizabeth Coffey. Good evening. It is with great honor that I am able to address both my classmates and all who have come to congratulate us on this great achievement. On behalf of the class of 2020, I would like to thank you for attending this somewhat unconventional commencement ceremony. Fellow graduates, we did it. We've earned our high school diplomas. Although I know this isn't the way that we've pictured this experience, each and every one of you has earned the right to walk across this stage. Our class was born in the midst of tragedy. We brought joy to a grieving country in the aftermath of 9-11. We entered kindergarten as the first iPhone came out, and there began the lifelong duty to show our grandparents how to log on to Facebook. In 2012, we prepared for the end of the world. This brings us to freshman year, 2015, yikes. If you're anything like me, you were terrified. Everything seemed so big, and the school was like a labyrinth destined to make you late for class. Eventually, we learned our schedules, wrote the dreaded Hobbit essay in Mr. Weaver's language arts class, and some of us experienced our first AP class with Mrs. Coulter. Before we knew it, the year was over. Then we were sophomores. Still not upperclassmen, but at least we weren't freshmen. We learned about the Bill of Rights in Mr. McCorkle's government class and managed to get bouncy balls banned from the school. This was also the year we started driving. Well, most of us, excluding those unfortunate students like myself who have summer birthdays. Each day, someone new came to school with a set of keys and was all too happy to offer anyone and everyone a ride home. Junior year, the year that kicked all of our butts. On any given day when asked how I was doing, I would have looked at you and complained about the 100 question stats hour assignment. Thank you, Ms. Clark. The three tests I had the next day and the ACT coming up on Saturday. This was also the year we had to stay, say goodbye to the class of 2019. Then we were seniors. The first semester flew by. Our college applications were done, and suddenly we were tasked with deciding what to do after high school. Then our year was cut short. It was devastating. Out of nowhere, the things we have worked so hard for were snatched away. Although it isn't fair, we've all made it through. We're graduating and heading off into the world. There are many factors that have gotten us to this point. I would like to thank the teachers and staff that have encouraged us, smiled at us, and pushed us to be our best these last four years. Of all the pathways that they could have chosen, they chose us. Ms. Clark chooses to listen to us all complain about the latest math quiz. Mr. Watts chooses to listen to the awful sounds coming out of the orchestra room when the elementary kids pick up their instruments for the first time. And Mrs. Fry chooses to risk her life in the AP Chem Lab. Thank you to our families, friends, and coaches that have supported us in our accomplishments, helped us in our struggles, and comforted us in our failures. Many of us would not be here today without all of you, and I am no exception. Mark Twain once said, the two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day that you find out why. Well, we've all been born, so we're halfway there. As we move on from our time at Chillicothe High School, some of us may know our why, our purpose in life, and some of us may still be figuring it out. I challenge each and every one of you to find your why and to hold on to it. Let it inspire you to do great things. Graduating from high school is only one step in the journey of our lives, although it may have, getting here may have felt more like a marathon. I'm not sure where each and every member of our class is going from here, but whether it be furthering your education in college, joining the workforce, or serving our country in the military, our time at CHS has prepared us for whatever lies ahead. So again, I ask, what is your why? How, what do you want to accomplish in your time here on earth? How will you be remembered? Thank you. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Andy Bloom, salutatorian of the class of 2020. Hello, fellow graduates. As I stand here in this empty auditorium today, 
I'm feeling many emotions. I feel anxious and sad because the year ended unexpectedly and the future is uncertain. However, I also feel accomplished as I have passed through the trials of high school. I feel proud as members of our class have achieved high athletic and academic honors. With all that being said, I'm here to give a speech. As I wondered what to talk about, wonderful memories of high school crossed my mind. From getting rubber balls banned to certain hot pepper incidents and kazoo shenanigans, I was overcome with how awesome these past four years of high school have been. So, what's next for us? College, the military, a job? I don't know much about what's next, but I figured I'd share today what I think about life. The great Ferris Bueller once said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Now, I'm guessing this quote resonates with us all. If you're like me, you aren't sure how it's already May, even though we've been doing basically nothing for the past two months. Life moves pretty fast. I came to this conclusion of what life is about. Life is like flying. Now, as Mr. Weaver drilled into our brains, an unsupported claim is garbage. So let me elaborate a little. Life is like flying because everyone gets dealt a different hand in the beginning. You could be sitting next to crying babies, or you could have the window seat. Bumps and jolts in the journey will take you by surprise. You shouldn't smoke. The bathrooms are never a pleasant experience. You'll get some pretty good food. The nicer people around you are, the nicer you want to be. Once we get into the air, we get perspective. That view is beautiful. Before you know it, you'll, you're back on the ground, wondering where all the time went. Life moves pretty fast. So, okay, life is like flying. Where am I going with this? Well, three years ago, my parents had the bright idea of giving me a test flight for my birthday. I'm not sure what parent would ever pay for their child to fly an airplane for the first time with them in the back seat, but to each their own. Anyways, once we were all buckled in, and my mom and dad had finished praying the Our Father and finalizing their wills, we took off. Now, there was an instructor in the plane with me, so I wasn't fully in control, but he was a little more laid back than you'd think. As we climbed into the sky, the instructor pointed out little blobs on the horizon. He showed us which one was Columbus, which one was Cincinnati, and which one was Dayton. These cities, which are usually over an hour's drive away, were suddenly visible. I had gained a new perspective. As we flew on, the instructor told me to lift my hands off the controls. At this point, my mom had gone into shock, and my dad was probably starting to regret this whole flying thing. But as I lifted my hands off of the controls, nothing happened at all. The plane flew itself. I mean, in the same way a car on the highway would drive itself with a brick on the gas pedal, but the plane just chugged along. Life is like flying. So what points am I trying to make? An important part of life is perspective. If you stay on the ground your whole life, you'll see what you can. But if you take to the skies at least once, the way you see the world will be changed forever. I noticed the plane flies itself. Life will go on no matter what challenges you come across. The days will keep coming. Although life will go on by itself, it's up to you to seize the moment and gain a new perspective. Life isn't just letting the days roll by. I'm no aviation expert, but if you let the plane fly itself for too long, you'll eventually lose control. Life is what you do behind the controls. Pick an end destination and head towards it. Today, we start another flight. No matter where we go next, one thing is for certain.
life moves pretty fast. Seniors, grab the controls and take to the skies. Go out into the world and change your perspective. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce Ms. Sophia Fulkerson, Executive Council President. At past Chillicothe High School commencements, there was a crowded gem, smiling faces, a handshake with the principal. Us graduates would have been shoulder to shoulder, absorbing the many emotions that filled the room. Each year, the class speaker usually talks about special memories or shares words of wisdom. But one thing that no class speaker has ever had to talk about was the year that their class didn't have commencement. I mean, clearly, we're all at home watching this on our computers, but let's face it, it's just not the same. I would do anything for this room to be filled with parents wiping their tears and ourselves looking around at each other in caps and gowns just to realize that this is the last time a lot of us will see each other. We are supposed to be giving our teachers the biggest of hugs and throwing our caps high up in the air, but this year, we just aren't. But one thing about the class of 2020 is that we will forever go down in history as the class that never finished their senior year. Today we are sitting at home with our families, glaring at our screens, possibly feeling a bit of disappointment. Nobody knows why the coronavirus decided to attack during this special time of our lives. But like all things, there is a purpose. Remember at freshman orientation when the seniors, who seemed to be giants, repetitively said, these next four years will fly by. Make sure you make the most of them. I always thought that was a little bit cliche and never realized how true that statement was until March 13th of 2020, our last day of high school. At the time, we were being released for a three-week break. Little did we know that that was the last time that we would see each other, our teachers, or those hallways that sometimes seem to be four miles long. We didn't even consider to give each other hugs, take one last mirror selfie in the bathroom, or grab one more butterscotch from Mr. Dean. We didn't realize that our prom dresses would never be worn, our grad parties canceled, or our grandparents would never walk, see us walk across the stage. One thing I regret is not spending time with the people in our grade as much as I should have, or even just reaching out to those who I don't usually talk to. But the truth is, we all thought that we would have three more months to spend with each other to make those special memories. We're all gonna regret things and wish to see each other just once more. But one thing for sure that we did not know is that the cancellation of our senior year would be one of the most pivotal points of our entire lives. We're all about 17 or 18 years old. We're at the end of childhood and we're getting ready to begin this journey called life. Like me, you've probably heard people say, life throws curveballs. And if you haven't experienced that yet in life, it's probably safe to say that over the last three months, you have. Somehow, a global pandemic is able to cancel our chance to cross the stage and our opportunity to celebrate one last time. But one thing for certain is that this pandemic does not have the power to cancel how magnificent this achievement is for each and every one of us. Sure, this is one of life's curveballs. Some people don't experience drastic changes like this until later in life but we are learning how to handle these situations at such a young age. We have taken a poor experience and made, it, made the best of it, a pivotal moment in the development of who we are and who we will be. Let's face it, our couch is not where we wanted nor expected to be, but today is our graduation. We deserve to celebrate because we made it. We made it through every one of the long meet the team talks. We never have to drink cafeteria milk again. 
and we will always be known as the class that got bouncy balls and kazoos banned. If you're asking me, it's been a pretty awesome four years. Four years that we will remember for the rest of our lives. Rather than dwelling on the chaotic last few months of our CHS careers, let's think of the three and a half years before that and the growth that we have shown throughout the journey. We will always be Cavaliers, and no matter what, Chillicothe holds our roots. It may have taken a pandemic to teach us to value some of life's greatest treasures, but one thing for certain, we have been blessed with a high school experience that we will never forget. The most special of teachers and a graduation that our kids and grandkids will ask about for decades. At a normal graduation, you'd have to wave at your loved ones while you walk back to your seat with a diploma in hand. But today, we don't just have to wave. Hold the people that you love so tightly, for now we know how precious a moment can be and how quickly it can become a memory. I hope that as you watch yourself walk across the stage today, an immense amount of pride th flows throughout you, for you have conquered this season of life. Tell your family thank you. Without them, it would be impossible. And share some of the biggest hugs that you could ever imagine. Let your mama cry. Let your emotions set in. And don't forget to be proud of yourself. It does not take a building to gather a community of people. We are close at heart, close in memory, and we will forever be the Chillicothe High School Class of 2020. Get ready, classmates. After all that we've been through as the president of our student body, I promise to help plan one of the most lit, I don't even know if lit's a cool lit word anymore, but lit five-year reunions that anyone has ever attended. Maybe then we can give the biggest of hugs, dance our hearts out, and relive the 2020 senior prom that we'd always dreamed of. Thank you, teachers, friends, and Chillicothe. You've made it a ride I will never forget. It's now my pleasure to introduce our senior class president, Mr. Andrew McCallum. High school meant a lot to me. In the past few weeks, I've thought about the fact that next year CHS will be here and I'll be gone. High school went by so fast and it's tricky to put words to the experience. I hope that speaking here allows me to better process the past four years. And not only that, I hope my speech allows all of you to better understand your time at Chillicothe High School. I absolutely love walking the hallways of CHS, a fact that often made it so that three minutes between classes was not enough time. Contrary to what movies show, high school hallways are very orderly. Everybody walks on the right side. If you go too fast, you get yelled at by teachers. Go too slow, and you'll get yelled at by the students. I've been guilty of both of these offenses at one time or another. Teachers stand outside their doors and wave at me as I pass. If you're cynical, you might think, well, yeah, that's their job. However, I have a hard time believing that it's in Mr. Laughlin's contract to shout, free high five Friday. One time, I was even able to steal a high five on a Thursday. Another great part of walking through the halls is seeing the students. I can always find someone to wave at in between classes. One day I was walking down the long hallway when I saw a trail of muddy boot prints on the floor. The prints began in the middle of the hallway and went for about two feet or so before completely disappearing. About a dozen others gathered around, including Mrs. Robinette, and we all put our heads together to solve the mystery. Eventually someone, probably a freshman, concluded that a man with dirty shoes had dropped out of the ceiling and jumped out a nearby window. We decided that this was the best answer we were ever going to get, and everyone went their separate ways. The time between classes is a blur, a rush to get to the next room. Why should what happens in the hall mean anything to me? 
Here's why. The hallways at CHS were a constant. No matter what had happened to me in the class before, whether it was a fun experiment or a bad grade, I always returned to the rhythm of the hallways. Sure, waving at teachers and students is a brief and simple thing, but it grounded me. I was always reminded that I was part of something bigger. And this never failed to make me smile. Now let's get to the classes. It would be almost impossible for there to be a larger array of classes than what is offered at CHS. Video broadcasting, 3D modeling, AP calculus, guitar, the list goes on. I am not alone when I say that one of my favorite classes was Global Foods. I got to eat for a grade. It was almost magical to me. On leftover days, Mrs. Groff would clean out the fridge by giving us free reign of its contents. Days like these led to the creation of strange food mashups like the pizza quesadilla, a dish that sounds good, but is basically a pepperoni taco. Almost everyone takes global foods at some point during high school. I'd have to check my transcript, but I'm pretty sure it's a graduation requirement. Classes are a huge blend of students, all grades mixing together. Cooking really does create a sense of unity. I realized this after I mistakenly put wax paper in the oven and created enough smoke that half the classroom joined together to call me an idiot. Taking electives like Global Foods always gave me a sense of community. People from a multitude of different points in high school were all mashed together, kind of like a pizza quesadilla. High school is over. I am left with four years of experiences. What should I do with them? The answer to that question is different for everyone, but for me, direction comes from Robert Fulgham. Fulgham wrote the book that became the play I was in my junior year. All I really need to know I learned in kindergarten. He ends his book with this passage. I recall an old Sufi story of a good man who was granted one wish by God. The man said he would like to go about doing good without ever knowing about it. God granted his wish. And then God decided that it was such a good idea, he would go and grant that wish to all human beings. And so it has been to this day. Thank you. Some of our graduates will start their post-high school journey by entering the military to serve and honor our country. This path you have chosen gives us great pride. Soon you will join the ranks of other veterans who have made significant personal sacrifices to advance and ensure the freedoms enjoyed by all Americans. Please allow us to honor you. And now, Ms. Swinehart, members of the Board of Education, faculty, parents, guardians, alumni, and friends of Chillicothe High School. As principal of Chillicothe High School, it is my pleasure and privilege to present to you the class of 2020. Students who have met all of the requirements mandated by the State of Ohio's Department of Education and those of Chillicothe High School, certified by the Chillicothe City School District Board of Education, are entitled to receive a diploma, signifying graduation from Chillicothe High School. At this time, Mr. Hartmiss, Ms. Swinehart, Mrs. Hawthorne, and I will proceed with the presentation of diplomas. Graduating with honors, Elizabeth Claire Coffey. Graduating with honors, Andrew John Bloom. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Sophia Jolaine Fulkerson.
Graduating with honors, Andrew Curtis McCallum. Clayton Christopher Alflin. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Kaylee Ryan Althouse. Sophie Joe Anderson. <laughs> Jayana Renee Badger. Graduating with honors, Aries Rose Barnes. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Hannah Lynn Barnes. Graduating with honors, Lillian M. Barr. Graduating with honors, Trajan Anthony Beard. Ryan J. Beardsley. <laughs> Hallie Michelle Beatty. Michael James Beatty, Jr. <laughs> Alexis Caitlin Bello. Graduating with honors, Christian Paul Benson. <laughs> Ricky Renee Betts. Jasmine Kylia Nicole Beverly. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Garrett Lee Bogus. Jet Donnell Bond Pennington. <laughs> Ethan J.P. Bowman.
Graduating with honors, Cressa Caroline Breyer. Adesia L. Brooks. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Catherine Marie Brown. Keyshawn Dion Brown. <laughs> Victoria Renee Brown. <laughs> Levi Leonard Brust. Ryan Austin Donald Buck. Vincent Brian Baskowski. Jason Burnham Jr. Josephine Marie Kaplinger. Wesley David Kaplinger. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Chloe A. Carroll. Isabella Haven Carter. Electa Melody May Casto. Colton James Cheney. <laughs> Abigail Storm Chedester. Graduating with honors, Jadalyn Elizabeth Kokenauer. <laughs> Tony Lee Conrad. Drake Walker Coonrod. <laughs> 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 
Madison Lee Copas. Isaac B. Copper. Logan Price Cottrell. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Ethan Corey Cox. Seth O. Cox. <laughs> Dominic D. Coy. Lucas Staten Crawford. <laughs> Alicia Michelle Cunningham. Isaiah Eugene Cunningham. <laughs> Hannah Nicole Courier McPherson. Aaron M. Curtis. Jada LaRose Marie Damon. Graduating with honors, Kendall Hayden Davison. <laughs> Tristan P. Dela Cruz. Andrew Chase Dement. <laughs> Gavin Robert Deddy. Raymond Arnold Deddy. <laughs> Tejan Marcus Desmond Lee Dixon. Graduating with honors, Matthew J. Dobbins. <laughs> Chris.
Christopher Paul Domo. Graduating with honors, Dylan Stewart Downing. Shayna K. Downing. Graduating with honors, Natalie Susan Drotliff. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Cortland Gregory Duncan. Annabelle May Vanessa Dykes. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Kayla Michelle Fitzpatrick. Madison Nicole Flinton. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Caroline Rose Ford. Graduating with honors, Zoe Janzen Ford. Good job, Zoe. Graduating with honors, Justine Lynn Freedom Moore. Graduating with honors, Carlitos Jesus Garcia. <laughs> Destiny Lynn Gowalik. Jacob R. Gerber. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Dylan James Glock. Graduating with honors, Allison Elizabeth Gossman. <laughs> Aiden Quest Gray. Mackenzie Nicole Green. <laughs> Deborah Kyler Joe Grubb. J. 
Jason M. Gutierrez. Draven J. Haynes. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Connor Dwayne Hall. Graduating with honors, Julia Christine Hall. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Daniel Robert Haller. Michael P. Hamner. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Sarah Catherine Harness. Peyton R. J. Harris. Tamari Maisha Harris. Sean C. Hatfield. <laughs> Elizabeth Ann Hawk. Ikea M. Hawk. <laughs> Maya Ashanti Heath. Graduating with honors, Lauren Felicia Henry. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Michael Regan Herlihy. <laughs> Maggie Marie Hitchcock. Savannah R. Height. <laughs> Slayton Wayne Height. Zachary Dwight Figueroa Hoffman. Lanika <laughs> Lavette Lynn Holt. <laughs> Shalanda L. Holt.
Aaliyah Jordan Hoosier. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Haley S. Herf. Justin Patrick Jacobs. Graduating with honors, Annalise Marie Jenkins. Graduating with honors, Zoe Wren Jones. <laughs> Jace Cameron Jordan. Zachary Thomas Karshner. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Jarrett Lee Nicely. Taylor J. Cole. <laughs> Cheyenne Rain Kuntz. <laughs> Ashley Nicole. Lansing. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Jenna Rose Laperga. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Cheyenne Sky Leach. Graduating with honors, Summer Sky Leisure. <laughs> McKellen Matthew Lee. Haley Alyssa Sue Lindsay. Kristen Michelle Litchfield. Graduating with honors, Gabriel Lonzo Mallow. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Brianna Lynn Martin. Graduating with honors, Lily Alexandra Shao Pei Martin. <laughs> 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 
Hannah Grace Mason. Graduating with honors, Caitlin Lee Mulger. Graduating with honors, Javon Vincent Moffmer. Good job, Jay. <laughs> Quentin Michael Maxwell. Graduating with honors, Peyton Elizabeth McBee. Kristen M. McCorkle. Graduating with honors, Michael Silas McDaniel. Elizabeth Kate McGarvey. Michael David McGraw. Graduating with honors, Jaden Gabriel McNish. Cameron Elise McWhorter. Gavin Christopher Mead. <laughs> Dakota Christian Jose Mejia. Jonathan A. Messer. Lori Milhone. Graduating with honors, Malachi James Mitchell. <laughs> Avery Sinclair Moore. Sarah Ann Murphy. Trent Anthony Murray. Tice Edward Chris Netter. <laughs> Sh 
Sheridan Madeline Sky Newell. Graduating with honors, Cecilia Marie Newton. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Brandon Alexander Knoll. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Gwyneth Lee Noel. Graduating with honors, Dominic Joseph Nunziato. <laughs> Alice Nicole O'Rourke. Graduating with honors, Paige Elena Persinger. Lance N. Priest. Graduating with honors, Matthew Vincent Putnam. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Daryl Michael Ratliff. Sebastian G. Rao. <laughs> Dylan James Reed. Graduating with honors, Isabel Rose Reed. <laughs> Nehemiah Matthew Reisig. Graduating with honors, Avery C. Robinson. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Tessa Don Rogers. Graduating with honors, Vincent Edward Roper, Jr. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Patrick Robert Rourke. Graduating with honors, Elizabeth May Rout. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Kinsey Elizabeth Jean Michelle Russell.
Timothy H. E. Scott. Franklin B. Seeley. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Jarrett Alexander Seabom. Daniel McKay Shaw. Graduating with honors, Kiera Elizabeth Shewalter. Graduating with honors, Kelly Michelle Sigworth. <laughs> Haley Marie Simmerman. Shawnice Candace Smith. Nevea Ryan Summers. Tyler James Sparks. Austin A. Speakman. Nathan Ryan Spindler. Spencer P. Steele. Candace J. Stevens Acton. Eliza D. Stewart. <laughs> Tucker G. Stoneburner. Daisy Margaret Lynn Swallow. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Hannah Celeste Tapp. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Lakin Haley Tarleton. <laughs> Madison Elaine Thomas. <laughs> Grant.
Graduating with honors, Cameron Alexander Tisdale. <laughs> Kirsten Elaine Townsend. Graduating with honors, Patrick Gregory Tracy. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Lucas J. Tayo. Destiny and Nicole Vanoy. <laughs> Joshua James Wallace. Alexis S. Ward. <laughs> Charity Lauren Whitley. Hannah Joe Wiseman. Cameron D. Wildermuth. Cade Addison Williams. Graduating with honors, Alexis K. Williamson. Savannah Nicole Wilson. Jesse Walker Wright. <laughs> Tristan Michael Maceo Wright. And now, as principal of Chillicothe High School, it is my pleasure to state that you, the class of 2020, may move your tassels. I now pronounce you graduates of CHS. Congratulations, graduates. We're extremely proud of you and your accomplishments. At this time, will everyone please stand as the Chillicothe High School Symphonic Choir sings the Chillicothe High School's alma mater, the blue and white.
We'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us for tonight's special ceremony. While this last 11 weeks has been difficult for each and every one of us, we'd like to take this opportunity to remind you as the class of 2020 that we love you and we support you and we wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors. As always, once a Cavalier, always a Cavalier. Thank you and have a good night.